Welcome to GrowthToFreedom.com, the show that brings you inspiration, transformation, and leadership. We're helping you connect the dots, see the blind spots, and get unstuck so you can go out there and create more leads, more sales, more profits, more importantly, so you can go out and make a bigger impact, have a bigger reach, make a contribution, and a whole lot more. If that's what you want, you are going to love today's guest expert. He is someone that focuses on helping business owners, founders, CEOs, people like you, people like me, to help them promote themselves far better, to help them promote their business, their products, their services, and a whole lot more. He's a serial entrepreneur. I mean, it would take me a half an hour to get through every one of his lists, but he's a serial entrepreneur. Some of the top experts, some of the top companies in the world go to him to help them with their advertising, to help them have a bigger reach to help them get more new clients using online advertising. He's also the best-selling author of the book you see right now. And if you're hearing this, you can't see it, but just picture this in your mind, the book, the definitive guide to Facebook advertising. It's fourth edition, uh, the ultimate guide to Facebook advertising co-authored by Bob Regneris. Uh, He's a serial entrepreneur, the best-selling author of Facebook advertising, uh, and a whole lot more. Bob, welcome to the show, man. How are you? It's awesome. So good to be here, Dan. You know what? I'm glad you didn't read off the list of achievements. Sometimes it gets like, well, wow, Bob's kind of an old old fart, you know. I turned, <laughs> I turned 51 just a little couple of weeks ago. I'm like, yeah, I've been around a little while. Yes. I mean, we're in the same same bracket. You know, there's a lot of these young guys out there, and it's so funny, you know, online, you've spent millions of dollars in a month. Uh, for single campaigns, let alone multiple millions with, uh, when you add them all up and then you have all these people getting certifications for a hundred dollars, $200, $300 and they're experts. So I want to dive right into it to pick your brain because I think you've got a a controversial topic, misunderstood topic. Mm. See a lot of people, I'm sure you do too, that, you know, head down the wrong rabbit hole. And you know, it's so much easier as you're watching or listening. If if you like thought to yourself, golly, what if, I could just crack this code on paid media, paid advertising, so I could control my destiny, right? And if you've tried other things and maybe it hasn't worked for you, or maybe you felt like, oh my gosh, I've spent way too much money and it hasn't worked. Well, I think you're going to love what Bob is going to share with you today on solving the problem here. So Bob, like, what do you see are some of the biggest mistakes you know, that people are making with online advertising, paid advertising, Facebook advertising specifically? It's a great question. And I think where I'll start, Dan, is not being aware of what's going on around you. Uh, Facebook doesn't live in a vacuum. No media lives in a vacuum. In fact, you know, you, you have to realize that there's other things going on. So we literally, as we're recording this, just came out of a big election cycle. Um, as of now, we don't know who our, the leader of the free world is, uh, but what that, how that matters to us as Facebook advertisers is really two things. Number one, political candidates spend gobs and gobs of money. So you can imagine if you did any sort of economic study in high school or college, you understand that when there is a lot of demand for something, the price goes up. So what we have been experiencing as advertisers has been what we call increased CPM. CPM stands for cost per thousand impressions. It's basically how expensive is my advertising? And so we've seen really high CPMs. It's been expensive. And there's been more money spent on Facebook by political candidates this year than last year and the year before. And that's gonna continue to go up. So just understand if you're diving in and you might be aren't aware of what's going on and what influences the Facebook ad auction, you're going to be going, wow, Facebook traffic's really, really expensive. Well, yeah, it is. Um, that's because there's a b- bunch of money pouring in. The second factor with that is people's mindset, right? Consumers' mindset is going. They're, they're thinking about the political cycle, whether it's the presidential election or a local race or anything like that. Um, there's, there's some mindset uh, going on and some attention. Uh, I'll call it attention deficit. Um, they're not as... there's they're, they're not as much paying attention to your products and what you want to sell them than they are to what's going on in the politics. So that's one thing. And then here's another thing that's really happening right now, Dan, is obviously we're, we're still in the middle of a pandemic. And what has happened is e-commerce spending, 
e-commerce spending is at an all-time high. Uh, I want you to think about just the number of people that have shifted to e-commerce just in total. But think of all the brick and mortar retailers who are not getting people in their doors. And what's happening is they're having to put more money into advertising to generate traffic to their e-commerce stores. So really what we've experienced this year during you know, the last few months is political money, e-commerce money, and what it's done to us advertisers is it's risen <laughs> the level of spend that we have to get um, relative to everybody else and to get the same, number, uh, same number of conversions or the same performance. So I think one of the biggest mistakes is not realizing what's going on around us and attributing some of our results, whether they're good or bad, to what is going on around us. Ho hopefully that makes sense. It was a little bit of a drawn out discussion, but I I'm finding too many people aren't aware of really even what's going on. Yeah, and you know, we see this in different ways. You know, right now it's the election, soon it'll be the holidays, mm -hmm. right? You know, what's going on around you? you know, there's more money coming into the holiday spending, right? So you, know, you see kind of some similarities that go on there, different cycles through seasons. So as you're listening or watching right now, you know, you if you understand the expectation going in, this is also to, to Bob's point, you know, like, you know, what is your expectation, right? Yep. The key is, is it's got to, you know, people all the time, I, I'm sure you've heard this. If you've heard it once, Bob, you've heard it a thousand times, you know, how do I get the cheapest leads? <laughs> so I want you to actually, because I have a version, I want to have them hear your version of that, uh, if you will, of like a different way to be thinking about it than trying to get the cheapest leads. Yeah, I got a coaching client coming in asking that question. I kind of know where they're coming from and they're really at a disadvantage. That, that, this is really a mind shift. I, I think we're gonna keep talking about mindset on this. I don't mean to do that, but really what it, what it projects to me is this, is that they don't really understand the dynamics of marketing and economics. Uh, I, I like to work with clients that have the mindset of how much can I spend to basically dominate the market? Um, markets are very fragmented and, you know, 80% of the traffic probably goes to your main competitor and then another 20% is, is divvied up amongst others. I really want to work with, and we really need to have the mindset of, I want to be the top player in my market. Now, of course, you have to define a market that's, you know, relative to you. But the, if you were saying, how do, I, how do I do advertising as cheap as possible? You were asking the absolute wrong question. You should be asking, how much does it cost for me to profitably convert a customer? And how much money can I scale up to spend to absolutely dominate that market space? That, I don't know if your answer is similar to that, but that's the way I like to approach it. Yeah, and as you're listening or watching right now, you know, what does it cost you to get the customer, get to generate a client, but then you ideally create a journey, you create an experience that now you own the client through the journey, meaning you yeah. have the ability to offer them many other things, which is where your true value, your true exponential profits can kick in done right if you're working with someone like Bob. So, Bob, uh, before I get too far into strategy, because I know you've got a wealth of strategies you can share, like why are you doing what? Why are you on this mission, essentially, to help simplify advertising for like everyday small business owners, the little guys out there. Tell us. Yeah. I mean, you know, by nature, I'm really high empathy, Dan, and I, I really enjoy working with, with people. Um, I'm, I'm a high school basketball coach. Uh, you know, I, I revealed my age earlier, but I've been coaching for 33 years now. Um, I've been doing it since I was a junior in high school. I really enjoy working with people and helping them perform at their very best. So when, when I ventured into the life of entrepreneurial um, roller coaster, uh, it was with the intention of not developing a product and making a big sale. I, I, I went from the standpoint of, I'm really good at working with people. I'm really good at learning things, teaching and coaching people to higher performance. So um, my way of serving is to get in front of people, um, get in front of audiences, work one-on-one -on -one with client, work one-on many with clients, uh, writing, teaching. Um, I, I really have this belief that uh, many of us are following too many bright, shiny objects. Uh, when I sit down and develop a course or I develop this book specifically, you know, it took me 19 months from the time I agreed to do it to the time we delivered it to the publisher. My goal was to create an ultimate guide. And I, I know the title is catchy, but it's really true. 
Um, I really want to create an all compassing type of um, piece of work that somebody can sit down who's never done it before and figure out how to do something really well. I mean, I guess my other goal would be if somebody is looking to, you know, break away, many people have been laid off. Um, they have to find a new gig. I, I think running Facebook ads is a fantastic way to make a living. I've done it for many years. Um, if you could learn a skill from this book, charge clients money and, and become independent, I, I would love for that to happen. But I'm just really about lifting people up and, and giving them the tools that they can really say, hey, I, I'm winning. Um, that's what I do on the court. And that's what I do in the business court as well. And if you'd like to win and you want to learn more strategies on how to win, you're going to want to stick around here for the next few minutes. And now speaking of coaching, speaking of high performance, Bob, you know, we have uh, Kevin Thompson to thank for getting us connected together. Yeah. You know, he runs a group in a community called tribe for leaders. Uh, if you want to learn more about Kevin, we've got an episode with Kevin uh, that you can go just site type his name at growth to in the episode list, Kevin Thompson, uh, he's a wealth of wisdom. He's one of the most, you know, genuine, uh, down to earth people you'll ever meet. One of the best connectors in the world to bring people together, sharp people together as well. And that's how Bob and I got connected yep. uh, as well. And so now, by the way, as you're watching or listening right now, like what would it be worth for you to crack the code on building out winning ads that perform and get a positive ROI using something like Facebook? right? Using paid media, using paid advertising, right? Where you could eliminate your competition, you could dominate your competition. And maybe if you wanted to, you could go out and help others. That's something that you'd want to know more about. Well, guess what? When we come back, we're going to take a deeper dive with Bob on all his insights, his strategies, his wisdom, as much as we can pull out in the short time that we've got together, grab a pen, grab a piece of paper. And oh, by the way, you want to come back to this episode, you can do that at growththefreedom.com forward slash 302. That's growththefreedom.com forward slash 302. If you never want to miss an episode, you can go to growththefreedom.com forward slash subscribe. That's growththefreedom.com forward slash subscribe. We'll be right back more with Bob Rignaris on growththefreedom.com right after this. Thanks for listening to this episode of growththefreedom.com. Are you struggling to get a steady flow of new clients every day? or maybe hit a plateau or hit a wall in growing your business? Well, let's help you solve this problem today. Let's review your business and have a conversation. You can do that for free today at BreakthroughStrategyCall.com. That's BreakthroughStrategyCall.com. In addition, if you're looking for a simple way to implement some of what we've been talking about in today's episode, then I want to encourage you to get our free small business toolkit. You can get that at Activate dot breakthrough 3x.com that's activate dot breakthrough 3x.com if you'd like access to the special resources and all the show notes for this special episode make sure to visit growth to freedom.com welcome back to growth to freedom.com now now bob i want to really dive in i mean you've worked with all kinds of i mean you know co-authors of the book are people like uh, perry marshall uh thomas uh Maloche, and a whole lot more yeah. Right. As you've worked with all these different clients over the years um, and help them grow their business, grow their impact, grow their influence in the in the market. Like if someone's kind of new at Facebook advertising, where would you recommend someone like take the first step or get started? Got a great answer for this. And it's not trying to run your first ad to cold traffic. I think where we all dive in is, hey, we've got this product, we got this service, we got this great idea, we're gonna put some money into some advertising, we're gonna get a flood of new business. Um, unfortunately, that's a pipe dream. <laughs> uh, maybe it was true a number of years ago when the, when, the, when the media was immature, but right now Facebook is a mature media. Um, there are uh, what I would call ninja advertisers uh, who are out there managing ad accounts and there is huge, huge dollar swing. I talked about the political ads, I talked about the big box retailers, and there's just a lot of people putting money in. So you can't go uh, to a gunfight with a knife. Um, you really got to you got to be equipped. So um, what I like to say is I, I want you to start backwards. Uh, what we think advertising is, is we're going to go bring in new customers. I say the better way to go is let's go after warm traffic. Now, 
the difference between cold traffic and warm traffic is really just their awareness. And we, we use these terms as marketers, people are probably familiar with, but the idea here is this. Um, before we venture out, it's likely we have a website up and we've had some traffic coming to the site. Um, perhaps maybe we're doing some other type of marketing and we're bringing people in and now we want to expand into Facebook. The good news is there's a piece of code that you're required to put on your site. It's called the Facebook pixel. It's nothing more than a piece of JavaScript. Um, it goes into your website, but it powers really the entire marketing cycle for Facebook. Um, not only does it measure what happens within your Facebook campaigns, but it measures what happens on your website in total. So if you're getting a lot of referral traffic, if you're doing like uh, some sort of offline advertising, TV commercials, radio ads, um, or if you're running Google ads or TikTok ads or whatever it is, uh, Facebook is measuring what's happening on your site even before you run a Facebook ad. And that's really to our advantage. Uh, because what we want Facebook to do is be able to understand what's going on your site and it's going to help tune our ads. And so what I like to tell people is let's start first by trying to advertise to people that have already come to our website. So retargeting is the simple mechanism of reconnecting with somebody who's visited your website already. It's a very simplistic definition. It's a lot more complex than that, but that's just the simple definition. So what I want people to do, the first thing I want them to do is think of an ad that they can create that retargets people who have visited their site and didn't take the action we want. So if you are uh, trying to get appointments for a practice, let's say, um, if somebody goes to your contact form, doesn't fill it out, we're going to run a retargeting ad that maybe is a testimonial or it's some sort of lead magnet, or it's some sort of piece of content that helps create a bond or helps nurture them a little bit more. Um, if you have an opt-in form, you're trying to give away a lead magnet or something like that, come up with something different, a different article, a different video to basically keep connecting with them. Because the thing is this, is that people don't come to your site and reject you outright because they don't like you. What happens is life gets in the way. Uh, they may be visiting your site, they're on a mobile phone, and maybe they're in, in the middle of doing something. Maybe they're commuting, maybe they're uh, you know, just wasting time for a second. But the idea is this, is maybe they, they got to your site, they saw something, they, they, they read it, they think, oh, this is good, but they're not ready to take action yet. So it's our job as advertisers to reconnect to them. Um, before retargeting existed, man, it was really, it was like, hey, if we don't get that email address, they're gone forever. Well, this is really kind of a new concept. I mean, it's, it's really only been around about five years, but it's really great for us as advertisers to be able to step back and relax and to be able to say, hey, you don't, if you don't do what I want you to do on the first uh, visit, I'm going to be able to follow you around and I'm going to be able to reconnect with you. So, um, I, I've got clients, coaching clients that are doing retargeting campaigns to like five, ten dollars a day. You know, they have meager traffic, but it's really productive. I have retargeting campaigns for clients that are doing return on ad spend, meaning if I spend a dollar, I make a two dollars. You know, that's a two to one return on ad spend. But I have clients doing one to 15, one to 20. I have a client doing one to 75, meaning you're, you're spending a dollar and getting $75 uh, average revenue. Uh, it's a really profitable way to advertise. It's a really inexpensive way to advertise. And to me, it's the very first place you start before you run a cold ad. And, and speaking of the first place you start, right? Um, you know, I know in the book, you talk about the mindset and you've talked about mindset here. Like where, where, do, you, where, where do you frame like knowing your customer or knowing your client first? Oh, I mean, it's paramount. Uh, one of the very first things I talk about in the book is the concept of Eugene Schwartz, who wrote the book Breakthrough Advertising, 1966. Um, it's even older than me and you. <laughs> um, <laughs> he, he talked about the customer awareness timeline and just having an understanding of when somebody enters your world, they're either completely unaware of you or somewhere down the line. Um, the advantage to a Google advertiser, by the way, Dan, is people are typically what Eugene calls problem aware. They're, they're typing in keywords in the search engine looking for solutions to problems. Facebook is one step back 
um, we're interrupting people as Facebook advertisers. You know, it's like you have in a party, you know, you got 50 family and friends. Well, not these days, it's 25 or less, right? You got 25 or less people over and somebody barges in your door and wants to sell you a vacuum cleaner. Well, that's what a Facebook advertiser is. It's an unwelcome guest to the party. Uh, so we have a really big job to do. We have a, we have a job of not only um, getting their attention, but giving them enough information or giving them something of substance that makes them stop partying, <laughs> right? Looking at pictures of family and friends and taking action on what we want them to do. It, it's a monumental task if you just think of it logically like that. But the idea here is this is, we can't interrupt somebody if we don't understand the environment that we're in. Uh, it, is a, it is of paramount importance that before you even run an ad, you have a complete understanding of what your customer needs. I hope at this point, if you're thinking about advertising, your product or service absolutely serves a need. Uh, that's kind of paramount. And, you know, this is like, Mark, it's not even 101. It's like what comes before 101. Uh, right. But if, if you do have something of substance, um, you, you need to be able to explain why you are unique and who it's for. And the marketers that are able to do that, and, and, and by the way, the good news is if you're able to do that really, really well, it doesn't matter how much Coca-Cola is spending or Joe Biden or Donald Trump is spending. Um, if you can do that better, Facebook will reward you. Facebook's auction is not just built on how much money you're willing to spend. It's built on your budget, that's only one component, but there's two other components. How effective are you at getting somebody to click on your ad and how effective are you at converting somebody on your website? Those are two of the three factors that affect whether your ad is gonna be successful. So even if you put budget aside, uh, you're still able to compete against those big budgets. And if you know your customer and if you have a really good offer, you're gonna be successful on Facebook and any other media that you enter. Speak about the idea of an irresistible offer or the mafia offer, whatever you want to, whatever, whatever you want to call it. I know you, you go through some of this in the book too, uh, but like how important do you think that someone should focus on, you know, whether it's even a lead magnet, whether it's, you know, you, you don't just throw stuff out there, but put stuff of value that solves problems. Speak to your way. Yeah. Of looking at, and I know you go much deeper in the book, but talk about the idea of an irresistible kind of offer. Well, uh, I'll start with a story. So I, uh, I, I attended a meeting at Facebook headquarters down in Austin a number of years ago, and uh, I had a conversation with the, the head engineer for the platform, the guy who's in charge of the team that codes the algorithm for the ad platform. And he told me this, he said, you know, there's, there's, there's three things that really affect how well your ad's going to be. Number one is it's targeting. Number two is how you bid. And number three is your ad creative. And he said, you understand that we target better than you. <laughs> um, you know, we haven't even got into Facebook models and lookalikes, but essentially Facebook knows our customer uh, better than we do. They, they know who to target. Secondly, Facebook has all these objectives that allow you to ask them exactly what you want. Uh, if you want to get traffic to your site, if you want people to watch a video, if you want somebody to buy something, if you want somebody to download something. Uh, you could be very specific about what you ask Facebook for. But those are two things that Facebook automates and does really well. The third thing they cannot do is develop creative. Um, I think it's years and years and years and years away before Facebook knows how to automate creative. This is where we gain our competitive advantage. So before we even consider thinking about, okay, you know, we're going to convert traffic, we need to be thinking about, number one, how are we going to capture their attention? And on Facebook, that's your media, that's your image, that's your video, whatever that piece of creative is that captures the attention. So number one, capture their attention. Number two, what we have with an ad is not a headline like a traditional marketing piece, but a primary text. So if you notice, anytime you go through your Facebook newsfeed, there's three lines that show up on Facebook first. So what we do is we focus in on really good media, so an image or video, and then optimizing those first three lines of our primary text, okay? Um, the headline in a Facebook ad actually is on the bottom, and it's the least important thing that you have to worry about. It's really about media, first three lines. That's where you're going to start to win. Um, 
remember one of the things I said in, in how well your ad performs is the click-through rate. So if you're able to have a piece of media, whether that's a video or an image that performs better than the average, you're gonna win. And then if you're really good at writing copy, now we can make copy as long or shorter as we want. And I'm not gonna get into long copy, short copy. It, it doesn't really matter to me. But what I need you to be good at is capturing attention in those first three lines. And I have a little hack for that or kind of a cheat code um, is storytelling. And I, I have a whole chapter on storytelling and there's multiple chapters in the book about how to capture attention. But we're all wired as humans to engage with the words once upon a time, right? Um, if we could become better storytellers and connect with people, if we can start an open loop, if we can start a conversation and engage people, they're gonna be hooked. So really all your success on Facebook is about hooking them, capturing the attention, hooking them. And then it's all about offer, Dan. Um, offers are something that you typically are testing on your site and the first thing we come up with is not going to be the thing that ultimately wins. We, we have to be in the mindset of we're going to we're going to be in this for the long haul and we're going to be trying different things because we don't know exactly what's going to hook somebody. And it may be that we have multiple hooks. You know, maybe we we segment our traffic and we have one offer for this segment, one offer for this segment. Uh, really, what we're trying to do ultimately is fulfill needs. If we're able to hook their attention and we're able to fulfill a need or deliver something to them that people really want, that's that's essentially how we're going to win at Facebook advertising. And if you want to win at Facebook advertising, if you want to simplify the process, if you want to set yourself up so that you get a positive return on ad spend or return on your investment in the game of advertising and using Facebook as a tool that it is, then I want to encourage you to get Bob's book you know, the ultimate guide to Facebook advertising. You can get that right now, Bob. Tell everybody where they can get a copy of the book and how to go do go ahead and do that. Yeah, thank you, Dan. Uh, I have a website set up. It's called ultimatefb.com. And the reason I'm not sending people directly to Amazon, number one is we've sold out. Uh, it's pretty exciting to see like, well, it's scary on one hand, but exciting the other, but we, we've sold a lot of copies already. So when you, I don't know if anybody's created something that's so personal, uh, you just you just don't know what's going to happen. So I am like, I am both shocked and 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 excited that so many people right away have have got the book. Um, but the reason I do that is I, I want to give people extra value. So not only will I link you directly to a site where the book is in stock, but I've done interviews just like Dan and I are doing with some of the co-authors. Uh, there's people in this book who I'm just really honored to call friends who were able to contribute to this book. Um, Ryan Dice uh, wrote a chapter in this book. Uh, Brian Kurtz wrote a chapter. Jeff Walker wrote a chapter. Dennis Yu wrote a chapter. And there's 10 basically guest authors, uh, including obviously Perry Marshall, who's, who's my co-author. Um, I have 10 of those interviews available. So I would like you to get the book, but I'd really love you to listen to these interviews. Um, I talk to these guys and I ask them questions that maybe typically they haven't got asked before just because I have a, a kind of a personal relationship with them. So I was really, uh, really proud of those interviews. So go there and enjoy those interviews, uh, but also a link directly to the book. It's ultimatefb.com. And I appreciate you giving me a chance to, to plug the book, Dan, because I'm really proud of it. Absolutely. And guess what? If you want to solve Facebook advertising, if you want to simplify, if you're looking for a way to have a new approach to being able to make paid advertising work for you, then I want to encourage you to go get Bob's book. In fact, I'll make you a promise. If you go get the book and you don't think it's worth it, hit me up. I'll give you your money back for this thing because Ooh. I know Bob can help you. He can help you. Right. And I, and I, and it breaks my heart. You know, Bob, how many times do we see good people, hardworking people, they start down this path and then they just have happened to meet the wrong expert. Mm. You know, Gary yeah. Halbert, probably a mutual mentor for both of us before he passed, said, you know, the most expensive information is bad information. Mm -hmm. Guess what? There's yeah. a lot of bad information. So if you've tried something and it hasn't worked or you've tried something and you spent a lot and it didn't work for you or you feel like you've hit a wall or a plateau using your current methods, Let's get you access to some of the best in the world. So not only Bob, but he'll even say that, he, you know, his experts, his, his support team, the people that are co-authors of this book, you know, the interviews you'll get access to, 
Like it's the best in the world. So go to ultimatefb.com. That's ultimatefb.com right now. Take advantage of it. Go through the book. And if you go through the book and you don't think it's the best thing you've ever heard or seen to help you simplify advertising online, hit me up. I'll give you your money back. No questions asked. That's from me to you. Uh, I don't know that we can make it any simpler, any more fair, anything like that. So uh, go, go right now, open a browser, pull. If you're driving, pull off to the side of the road, open up a separate, <laughs> keep listening, keep listening. Or if you're watching a video, just hit that other browser that you've got. It's either on your phone or on your that desk that you can keep this going, but open it up, go to ultimatefb.com. Start typing in your info, go ahead and order. It's simple. It's easy. And you'll find that going through the book is going to be like a walk in the park. It's like having a guide by your side to help be a mentor for you in a book form. Like, I don't know that we can make it any simpler. So go to ultimatefd.com. Now, Bob, as we kind of wind some things down, you know, I can't be, I can't help but be fascinated by there's so many things that are similar with our backgrounds from our hairline or lack of, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, to, um, you know, to coaching, right? Yeah. What is something that coaching has taught you that you feel applies to business that might be something that most people wouldn't know? Oh, wow. A um, couple of things come to mind. Number one, um, and this is really applicable to me, is that you, uh, a coach needs to be adaptive. Um, the game of basketball evolves um, and, and it also changes based on your audience. So not only I, I coach high school boys, 15, 16 year old guys right now, uh, but uh, I started with boys and then for 10 years I coached girls my, when my daughter was going through. Um, so I found the things that uh, worked for me coaching boys uh, did not work coaching girls. Um, and then when I bet, went back to boys, I was, I was kind of like, it, it was a big transition again and it was a little scary. Um, I'll tell you the difference. Boys need to be pushed. Girls need to be pulled. Um, girls are much more motivated by nurturing and boys are more motivated by pushing. Um, and that's the big difference between coaching. So I found um, that it's really important for a coach to be adaptive. Um, the environment changes, the game changes, and you need to evolve with it. So, you know, fundamentals don't change, but the, the game does. So one of the things I've had to learn in my business career, just like my coaching career, is to be adaptive. Um, the second thing is, is that um, you can't coach somebody who's not willing to be coached. Uh, and this is a tough one for me to swallow because I know it could help people. Uh, but I have players every year, Dan, who just don't take to coaching. Um, they either think they know it all or they just don't have this inner drive to get better. And there's not much I could do. Um, I can coach fundamentals. Um, I could teach people the proper way to do things. But the one thing that I can't coach is motivation and energy. You have to bring that. Um, if you're a business owner, if you're a basketball player, it doesn't matter. You've got to bring that energy to the table. It's not a job of a coach or a mentor. Dan and I, you know, we could hype you up as much as possible. But if you're not willing to buy into that, if you're not, if you can't, if you can't muster up the energy yourself to be motivated to do what you do, then you really shouldn't be playing the game. And I think that's the two major things that I've learned over the last few decades. Uh, that, that's so, so powerful. I see that coach in our young kids, the, you know, these 12 year olds, essentially we've got a 12 and under team in football and uh, you know, it's just, it's so similar, right? Yeah. You know, it evolves, kids evolve. Right. And then also, yep. you know, as the, you get more skills, right. The, the, the evolution of them as an athlete and also the yeah. game, right? Yeah. The speed of the game, right? And as a coach, yeah. you know, ideally you set your team up to be successful and slow the game down, right? And uh, yeah. there's all kinds of different ways to do that. So speaking of slowing the game down, right? Being a good coach, you know, again, you've worked, you know, with so many of the top experts in the world to help them. I mean, you literally run their ad, ad campaigns for them to right. help them just get this stuff done instead of, you know, them trying to do it on, on their own. Right. And everybody has an approach, but we talked about like getting started. Right. But let's say someone's yeah. a little bit further along, Bob, uh, yeah. in this journey, maybe they've got some campaigns that are kind of working, but like what are one to three strategies that, you know, you've seen in the last three to six months that man, like, wow, these are game changers. These are like a domino. Keep this domino here for a reason. They're, uh, 
these one to three are like dominoes that can tilt over at that. What would be one to three strategies you'd encourage somebody who's a little further along in the game to be doing like right now? Okay. Uh, a couple of things. Let's number one, let's talk about targeting and audiences. Uh, one thing that's really simple. And I talk about this in the book is give Facebook better models. Uh, one mistake that I see people using is um, it, they know they need to create lookalike audiences, but they're using a model that's inadequate. Uh, what I prefer to do, especially for somebody who's been advertising a while, you probably have a very large customer list. So um, in the book, Brian Kurtz uh, talks about a concept called RFM, recency, frequency, money. And it's the concept of this is that somebody who buys, uh, who is bought from you today, uh, is more likely to buy again than somebody who bought from you three months ago. Uh, that's the concept of, uh, re of recency. Frequency is if somebody buys from you multiple times, okay, um, and money is how much they spent. So one of the things we like to do um, for quick wins is if a, if a client is modeling their entire customer database, we like to do what's called an RFM and try to find the 20% of that list that have bought from them most recently, bought from them most frequently and spent the most money and use that as a model. And pretty typically when we run tests against a, a lookalike of your entire customer database, uh, a customer, entire customer database versus an RFM uh, customer file, uh, we'll generally outperform that um, by multiples. Um, it's just giving Facebook better data. And then I think the other quick win that um, some people forget is that uh, there's a lot of gold in your email list and especially the unsubscribes. Uh, you know, we've got people who have, you know, 100,000 million people on their list and there's a large percentage of those people that have unsubscribed. Um, so one of, the, one of the quick wins we usually get for a client is to upload a list of unsubscribes and run uh, basic campaigns to that. You know, what, whatever their offers are, um, you can't reach them on email anymore, but you could reach them on Facebook. Uh, it's, a, it's another way to get a quick win. Um, and I think the third thing is this, is that um, you really need to be thinking about how can I frame, uh, how can I frame my business in different lights? I, I think a lot of people who've been around the marketing game for a while have gotten to the mentality of marketing 1.0 where there's one optimal way to convert people. And the idea is it's not that way anymore. Um, you know, you're, most people live in a house that have multiple doorways and there's multiple windows. So you need to be thinking about there's multiple ways people can come into my business. And there's not one way that's the best way. If you were trying to funnel all that traffic through one doorway, it gets jammed up and people are gonna leave. But if you can create multiple doorways, all right, um, you know, maybe there's not just two or three ways. Maybe there's 20 ways that people would want to come into your business. And so what, what we're talking about is, is customizing uh, content to different people for different reasons. Uh, if you're a large enough business and serve a vast customer uh, database, um, you're going to have different reasons for people joining your business and buying your product, you know, taking advantage of your services. So one of the things that that experienced marketers and big businesses have to really understand is we need to build multiple silos or multiple doorways now into our business. And it's not about over optimizing one door. It's about creating multiple doors that work. And so maybe one converts at 8%, one converts at 6%, one converts at 4%. Well, if all, all those doors are profitable, then they're all valid. Um, so really what I do is I focus less these days on trying to optimize one thing. I'm just trying to find multiple doorways for my clients to get multiple streams of clients coming in. So hopefully that's useful for some folks. As you're listening or watching, right? I mean, we're just scratching the surface. If mm -hmm. you want to go deeper with what Bob has shared with you, again, go get his book, ultimatefb.com. Hit that site right now. If you're driving, you don't have access to open it right now, come back to the show notes. You can do that at growththefreedom.com forward slash 302. That's growththefreedom.com forward slash 302. Go to ultimatefb.com, ultimatefb.com. Now, Bob, as we wrap this up, what's, uh, what's something I should have asked you we didn't get a chance to cover yet? Oh, man. Let's see here. Um, should I write a book? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> start with um, a checklist first. Start with a checklist first. <laughs> um, actually, no. Um, I, I'm I'm actually serious. I uh, I I just got back from a, a roundtable meeting. That's Perry's uh, high level mastermind. And number one, everyone, every entrepreneur should be in a mastermind. I, I hope they are. Uh, because it gets you out of your environment and challenges you. So, if, you know, I'm a member of actually three masterminds. Yes. Um, two of them are virtual. One is in person. And it was really good, by the way, Dan, to get together with people. I mean, we were socially distanced and everything, but we haven't been together uh, as, as a group of people since March. So it was really good to get together. But one of the things I talked about, there's a number of people who are considering, like, they know how important a book is. And, and I've written five books. I know what they've done to my career. Uh, a book helps you basically take all your knowledge and put it into this compressed format. And yeah, we know about the celebrity status and the expertise and things like that. But to be able to articulate your gospel uh, in one book is really important. And the starting point for that is an outline. Um, I've had the outline for the book that we're promoting here today for four years. Um, I started developing that four years ago. Um, I put down kind of major topics that I thought were important. I, I, I wrote about strategies that I developed, you know, things that worked, things that didn't work. Um, so I, I've got a friend right now who's, who's getting a book done, trying to get it done by February. There's another two people in that mastermind that are like, they're trying to get a book done in 2021. My advice is, start with an outline. Um, if, if you have an outline together, um, that is the framework. It's the skeleton. Um, it's, it's what is the ba is, is going to form the baseline for your book. Um, that's the way to get started. There you have it. I mean, get a book. And yeah. by the way, I've got like five and a half pages of notes here. And Bob has shared with you some amazing, are you going to put retargeting in place? Are you going to get that started today? Are you going to understand the three distinct ways that you have the best chance to boost your success with ads, right? He talked about some things like, you know, targeting. He talked about the bidding. He talked about ad creative. He talked about getting attention, right? Not just get attention, but keep attention. The three lines. He also talked about the idea of coaching, being adapted. He bought a whole lot more. Now, by the way, you can come back to this episode at growththefreedom.com forward slash 303. That's growththefreedom.com forward slash 303. Zero three. If you never want to miss an episode, you can go to growththefreedom.com forward slash subscribe. Now, Bob, I'd like to shift this last part into some personal stuff. If you can remember back, I don't know, when you were in high school, right? Or maybe a childhood situation, like when you may have realized you were going to probably do things a little bit different than most, probably around the idea of being an entrepreneur. Can you remember back to when that was, what that was, and you know, how that showed up for you? Well, boy, this is like a therapy session. <laughs> um, so I, I am, I am, uh, I'm, I'm double the man that I was in high school. So I, I entered high school at the ripe old age of 13. I didn't turn 14 until a couple months into my freshman year. I was five foot one and 90 pounds. Um, I'm no longer 90 pounds. Uh, I won't tell you what I am, but I'm six foot one. Um, so I was a little underestimated, um, both in grammar school and in high school. And I just kind of always knew I was a leader. And I always knew I was going to be involved uh, in coaching. I can't explain why, but I was able to, I, I mean, I love sports, uh, but I really kind of watch the game from the perspective of what's the strategy. So I've been really good throughout my life, kind of dissecting strategy and knowing what works and knowing what doesn't work. So um, I, I kind of knew that um, probably from junior high on. I didn't know where that would take me, but when I had the opportunity as a junior in high school to coach a small group of kids in our uh, parish, I took, the, I took advantage of that. And I loved it. And obviously I've been doing it ever since. That's, that's the first story. The second story is this, is um, I took the traditional path. I went to college. Um, I got a degree. I specialized in programming. I got a job at a big corporation out of college. And what happened was um, I sat at my desk and uh, I met a bunch of new people. And that was on a Monday. On that Friday, they had major layoffs. And people that I met on Monday were walking out of the office with a box in their hands on Friday. And I went, 
huh, <laughs> okay. So this is the way corporate America works. Now I put my time in, I worked hard, I, I learned some things, I got my confidence, but um, I, I had this in mind that I'm gonna own my own destiny. I am not gonna allow somebody else to decide kind of like what my life's gonna look like, how much money I'm gonna make. Um, I, I determined then and there, like five days into my corporate career that I was gonna be uh, doing things on my own. And so, you know, I, I worked my way through corporate America for a few years, but then I started doing independent things and I finally broke away in 1998, um, started working from home and have been doing that for 22 plus years. Congratulations, Bob. Yeah. Absolutely. Congratulate. Thank, thank you for taking us on this journey today and, you know, giving us some insight and all kinds of perspective, including the personal side. And as you're watching or listening right now, are you looking for a way to promote you and your business better? If so, reach out to Bob. The best first step to do that is to go and check out the book at ultimatefb.com. That's ultimatefb.com. Uh, check out this episode, come back through it. There's lots of notes, lots of resources, lots of action steps that you can take. And speaking of action steps, Bob, what would you hope would be one to three action steps our viewers, our listeners take from our time today? Well, number one, I, I don't appreciate people that learn things and don't implement. Um, mm. It just doesn't make sense to me. And I, I think the, the best advice I got is, you know, if you go to a conference, it's three day conference and you take, you know, 20 pages of notes. Uh, Try, try to take one action item. Um, just say, hey, you know, Bob talked about retargeting. I don't have retargeting in place. I knew that I had to get, I know I have to do it. Um, book some time on your calendar to get it done. Um, I'm motivated by what my calendar says. You know, I got an interview with Dan here at noon central time. I've got another interview at 1.30, like my calendar drives things. So put it in your, put it in your calendar and schedule it. Um, study, you know, Put in your calendar, get Bob's book, read Bob's book, um, and then schedule a week later that you read a few chapters. I'm going to get retargeting going. I, I think that would be the best advice, Dan, is to schedule it out and actually follow up and do it. Um, otherwise, you're just going to keep building to-do lists, building up a library, and it really is not going to do you any good. So there you have it. Schedule it, follow up, implement. Implement, yeah. schedule, follow up. Follow up, implement, schedule, whatever three or the order you want to put it, but yeah. do it, take action, yep. apply what Bob has shared with you today. Bob, it's been awesome, brother. I uh, appreciate you taking the time. I know there's some things you share that I haven't heard you share in other places. So I'm great. I have that. not. You asked me some questions that I've never been asked before. So this was awesome. I love it. Thank you. And, uh, you know, by the way, there's lots of people who uh, seek Bob out and literally they pay 20, 30, $40,000 at events to get access to some of this behind the scenes stuff you're getting it here. So do take action with what he's sharing. He's inviting you to it. I want to invite yep. you to take action, get his book, go to ultimatefb.com. That's ultimatefb.com. Uh, you know, if this impacted you in some small way, you know, a business owner, you know, a founder, you know, a CEO that could benefit from this, share it with them. It's real easy to share it. You can get to our site. There's a share button and you can go to send them to growth to freedom.com forward slash three zero three. That's growth to freedom.com forward slash three zero three. You want to come back to the all our episodes you can go to growth to freedom.com forward slash subscribe so take action seize the day we'll see you next time on growth to freedom.com thanks for listening thanks for watching bye for now thanks for listening to this episode of growth to freedom.com are you struggling to get a steady flow of new clients every day or maybe hit a plateau or hit a wall in growing your business well let's help you solve this problem today let's review your business and have a conversation. You can do that for free today at BreakthroughStrategyCall.com. That's BreakthroughStrategyCall.com. In addition, if you're looking for a simple way to implement some of what we've been talking about in today's episode, then I wanna encourage you to get our free small business toolkit. You can get that at activate.breakthrough3x.com. That's activate.breakthrough3x.com. If you'd like access to the special resources and all the show notes for this special episode, make sure to visit growthtofreedom.com.